We are back. It is now season four of the Roarcast, presented by Jag One Physical Therapy. I'm Mike Kowalski, joined by Kyle Matrician. Uh, we're got we're gonna start things off. Unfortunately, this is the second season of uh, handling spring sports. Uh, pandemic that doesn't seem to want to end yet so we're bringing we're starting the season off with uh two members of the archery program so you'll hear from them in just a minute uh kyle good to see you as always mike we've uh i said before we punched through the hardest part of a podcast the first year right although we did three seasons in that first year yeah and we did a basketball and we did basketball so, you know, it's yeah. uh i think the people are probably getting tired of listening to us and not seeing any live action out there but Soon enough. Soon enough. Soon enough. Coming back. We're back. Like I said, we're, we're talking about just spring sports. So the next few weeks uh, leading into May, we'll be here on Twitch every Monday for the next few weeks going through May. Um, so if you can't catch us here, make sure you check us out on all the major podcast platforms. Um, so, you know, we're, we're back. We're, we're giving you, catching you up with more spring student athletes. And we'll have other content on the Go Columbia Lions channels throughout the, the month, coming months here as we, you know, get through the academic year and then turn our attention to the fall where we're going full steam ahead. Well, Mike's calling it full steam ahead for the fall. Ahead. Full steam ahead. It's happening. Mike, you and I are both Mets fans. So let's give a quick plug. Are you, ex- I mean, how many days are we out now? For, from the time this podcast airs. Well, eight days of work from the day we were recording, it'll be three days when you see or hear this podcast. So you going this year? You trying to get to City Field? Uh, I, I mean, maybe, probably. I'm gonna go out of your way to try. I mean, early is just gonna be impossible. Yeah, yeah. opening day, no, but yeah, eventually as things you know open up a little bit more and everything. I did get Ranger tickets for and for a couple of weeks, so I'm gonna go to Rangers, uh, next Tuesday. So that what are be- they capacity? Are they like 10, 20 percent capacity or something like that? 2000. 2000 max so nice you know, things a little are- harder indoors but yeah like the outdoor stadium but when you see it on tv everybody's really spread out like there's yeah. really nobody within a mile of each other so um feel feel good about that bringing max my seven-year-old so he's excited we're really ready to go so is luke what's the age is luke almost at the age of uh, bringing to live sporting events i think i think max was max was like closer to five when i i brought him he was four i think but then, like, he was, like, almost five when I took him last All right. first time. If, so now, yeah. now, are you going to be able to bring both to a live sporting event yourself one day? Or is that a you and Steph combined effort? Depends. Depends. Okay. I think she would come if it was all of them, you know, like okay. the outing. We've done Mets games, all four of us. So That's true. That's true. A little bit different at a baseball game, too. You know, you can, look, you can kind of walk around a little bit more and more dead time. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like well, if there's any Yan- Yankees fans out there, we hope you get to the, the stadium this year too. But you know, unfortunately for you, this podcast is hosted by two Mets fans. So, so you just got to deal with us. You're just going to deal with you know, with, with opening day around the corner, we, we're going to have baseball and softball on next week. So we'll, we'll get some, their perspective on some MLB and stuff like that and, and talk to them uh, about their favorite teams and what they're missing about playing this spring and uh, looking forward to catching up with them. But first up, we've got archery. So we've got two student athletes joining us uh, in a few minutes, and we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be joined by them when we return. At Athletic Brewing Company, we've built America's first craft non-alcoholic brewery. We've created a lineup of award-winning non-alcoholic beers. Our beers are made with organic grains and start at only 50 calories. Athletic beers are perfect for anyone who loves being healthy and active, but also loves to enjoy a great tasting beer with friends. To give us a try, go to athleticbrewingcompany.com and use code ATHLETIC20 for 20% off your first order. We all know what comes with being a fan, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. Share a Coke with a friend. Coca-Cola, the official beverage of the Columbia Lions. We take care of the whole recovery process, getting them back to the level they were before they got injured, and many times even better. What's involved is preserving dreams. The first thing I do with any athlete is figure out their goals and then try to make a plan based upon that. One of the things that people don't quite understand about team physicians is how invested we are in these people's lives. We don't look at you as a guy with a shoulder problem. We try to understand what it is that makes you tick. 
All right, welcome back to our first episode of another season of the Roarcast, virtual once again. However, we are happy to bring in two members of our archery team. We have Sachiko Keen, a sophomore, joining us from Staten Island, New York. And we have Aaron White, a first year, joining us from all the way across the country in Monroe, Washington. So first of all, thank you, uh, Sachiko and Aaron, for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. No, of course. Uh, so, I mean, first things first, I know, unfortunately, uh, here we are again. Uh, Aaron, you know, you're a, fr you're a first year, almost slipped up there. Uh, you're a first year, so um, you didn't have to go through this last year in college, but I'm sure, uh, I don't know if it affected your high school, your senior high school season at all. I, I, I honestly, you know, I, I should know and I don't know how long that season runs in high school or what months exactly. But why don't you just uh, let us know um, kind of everything that happened last year, that how it affected you athletically. And then um, we also want to know your decision and how you arrived at Columbia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all throughout high school, I just shot on a local team. And then I was also part of the junior dream team, um, which was a national team. And so um, the pandemic didn't really affect like my high school athletic career um, at all, but I did miss like half of my senior year, which was a bummer, but, <laughs> but um, it also gave me an opportunity to shoot a lot more actually um, at home because I have a lot of like space in my backyard for me to shoot. Um, and so I kind of just shot for fun, kept practicing, um, cause archery is kind of like an outlet for me. Um, so I just kept that up and we didn't have any tournaments, but yeah. <laughs> uh, and it says here that you are the co-founder of Archers for Toby. So I'm not going to try to explain what that, what that is beforehand. I'm just going to let you take over. Why don't you let everybody know what that is and how mm -hmm. you came up with the idea? Yeah, so me and a couple of my archery friends, we came up with this idea um, called Archers for Toby. And um, it's basically a charity organization. And so um, we have a couple of archers on our Archers for Toby team. And we get um, sponsors from like our friends, our family, anyone who wants to donate. And at the national tournaments each year, um, they can sponsor an athlete or multiple athletes and donate money. And we group up all of that money and donate it to families of cancer patients to pay for like treatments or um, groceries, daycare, like anything that they need. Um, so we just are trying to use like our passion for archery to help people in need. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, we're uh, happy to have you on the podcast. That's like a really great story. And we hope uh, you wish you continued success in that, in that endeavor. But I think now we're going to turn our attention to Sachiko, like I said, a sophomore joining us from nearby in Staten Island, uh, New York, not too far away from where Mike and I over here in New Jersey as well. Well, Mike's, Mike's clearly, uh, you know, clearly, Midtown, you know. clearly in Midtown. Right, Is first. that the Chrysler, Chrysler building you're, you're uh, working in today? I think it, well, yeah, it might be. Yeah, you got, yeah, that. You got to see the Empire State Building behind you. Uh, but Sachiko, like I said, a sophomore, uh, you have been affected by uh, the pandemic, you know, at least athletically uh, with it, you know, canceling last archery season and now this archery season. But let us know what, how you and the team and you and your teammates have still found a way to come together over, the, over this last now what is over a year. Yeah, um, yeah, our season was cut off before it even began. So that really sucked a lot. <laughs> but um, during the uh, pandemic, those who could shoot would uh, shoot in their backyards or any like local stuff that was open to them while others weren't as fortunate so they couldn't practice. But we all still kept in touch. Thankfully with uh, Zoom, we would have uh, weekly or like every other week um, team bonding meetings where we just be the team. Coaches would also join in. We would play like uh, virtual games like um, Scriblio. I think that's how you call it. And we would have a bunch of other games like uh, Among Us. So Among that's Us, one huh? of the ways 
Yeah. yeah. Among, are you are you are you a diehard Among Us player, or was it just for fun? I was just for fun. A lot of us, um, I think some people played it before. I played it with my family just because we're stuck in the house. You have nothing else better to do. <laughs> How did you do? How were you ranked with your family members? Um, it gets cut off really quickly since my <laughs> parents aren't as good at it. it. <laughs> so whenever they're it, we're just like, they're like, oh, wait, there's the kill button. I'm like, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving the secret away. Did yeah. You, did you say you played that with your teammates as well, or just sorry, just your family? Uh, with the teammates as well. So who on the team? Who's the who's the Among Us uh, queen? Uh, we broke up into groups since we weren't able to like fit everyone all together on like a call. So we yeah. just broke it up into different groups. And uh, the group that I was with, um, I think uh, Nina Duke, she was really good at it. <laughs> we had no idea. <laughs> So I want to backtrack a little bit and I want to talk about both of you uh, started in archery and how did, you know, what, what drove you to pick up a bow and arrow and, and, you know, pursue this in, even in college. So uh, Aaron, let's start with you. Yeah. So I started archery um, because one day my sister and I were in our house and we found our grandma's old like longbow. And so we were like, what the heck is this like stick doing in our house? And so we asked our, our mom what it was and she explained it to us. And so we were really interested in it and we wanted to get lessons. Um, so we got lessons at like a nearby range. And then um, we got on like the competition team at that range. And then we just kept getting lessons and keep doing it. And now we're here. <laughs> so. Right, yeah, um, I started off with like uh, trying to figure out like what sports I wanted to do since I was like just doing homework in like middle school. And I think that I was doing fencing at the time. And since I was really small and I didn't have that much like upper body strength, the uh, person and the instructor told me either like try like weightlifting or archery to build up that upper body strength. So I never like heard of archery before, so I decided I would try that first. And I went to like my local range and um, picked up a bow. I think I missed the target completely. <laughs> I think I hit like the side of the wall. And um, yeah, ever since then, I just stuck with it. So how long did it take for you to kind of get the feel of it? And you said you, you missed the target completely your first couple of times, but when did you start mm -hmm. to get the hang of it and like really feel like this is something that you're good at and something you know you could actually do and compete at at the college level? I think it was mainly because like when I was doing fencing, everyone else was able to like hold it a lot. Like the, uh, I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, they were able to hold it a lot better than me. What was it? Was it the foil, the epee or the saber? Which one were you holding? I only there for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even have a chance to choose. <laughs> <your weapon. laughs> well, the weapon chooses you, as we've yeah. learned on this. No weapon. Well, the, uh, yeah, the, a new weapon, not the one you were expecting, chose you. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think like it didn't matter that I just didn't miss the target the first time. Like just after that, I was able to like figure out, oh, I can use tip of the arrow or like the sight to aim. <laughs> I just didn't aim the first time. <laughs> but um, yeah, I went at it again, like I think the next day or like the next time I had like time after school. And after that, it just became like, like almost therapeutic to me and like an outlet, like as Aaron said previously. And yeah, I just got kept going for more and more lessons and I got better at it. So how old were you at the time when you kind of first picked it up? You um, first found that bow in your grandma's basement and then, oh, no, no, that was when you were in fencing. That's right. You were doing fencing and you went to the range with your, with your bow and arrow and missed the target. So how old would you say you were? I um, believe it was in 2012 when I started. Okay. So almost, almost 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow. So I was going to say, explain to me how you go from that, right? But you were obviously very small. Yeah. Uh, pretty young at the time. I mean, if it was 2012, uh, your sophomore, I'm going to say you were probably about 10 years old, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to becoming an All-American and USA archery team member, I mean, talk about the amount of 
hours and dedication that go into that? Well, in the beginning, I wasn't really thinking of competition. I just enjoyed doing it. And because of like archery, just in general, or like in the club, it was a small community of people. So it was a lot easier to make friends. And so it was a nice way to socialize. since I was really shy. And um, yeah, I just kept wanting to like get better. I think the first tournament I went to was in uh, Queens. And when I shot there, it was the first time. It was so scary. And it was only like, I think only like 20 people at the time, but it was still like a big step for me. And after like I did the competition, I did very well. And yeah, I just been like practicing for more competition since then. And Aaron, you're also part of USA Archery. Talk about how you started with them and when you first started getting involved on the, the national scene. Mm -hmm. So I think I started competing in national tournaments about maybe three years into shooting. Um, and I really like going to the national tournaments, especially because I can see a lot of my friends that live in like different places. And so I've made a lot of friends that live in like other states than me and so it's kind of like a reunion every time we show up to tournaments um and yeah and competing on like a, a national level um is really exciting to me um and I feel like everything that I do I just want to do it to the best that I can and like do it um to the max I guess yeah. um and so I thought doing national tournaments was a really great way to like improve myself and and um, also open up the door for like international tournaments, um, which is something that I'm really interested in and would love to like continue in the future. I guess for both of you, how, how long do you have to practice and how often do you have to practice to kind of stay sharp and, you know, make sure you're ready to go for, you know, whenever you have to compete again and just stay, you know, on that national level and spotlight? Either of you can start if anybody has an answer. I'm sure it's different for both of you. Well, for me personally, from like just how it was for me from like when I started up until now, I would usually practice like six days a week. And usually for like either, I think like two hours. And I know that there are some other people that, um, at least at like these other tournaments that are generally, um, most of them are homeschooled. At least I'm combat, I don't know how it is for recurve. It sometimes seems like two different worlds sometimes, but most of the uh, top shooters are like homeschooled, at least from like what I've heard and seen. But um, I usually just think of that like, uh, it's about the quality, not the quantity of amount of shots that you take. As long as you like focus on each and every single shot with the amount of attention then it doesn't matter like you need to shoot like you don't need to shoot like 200 arrows like every single day for like x amount of hours you just need to make sure like you focus on each and every shot and give it your all what do you what do you guys do besides just repetition of shooting to kind of how else do you train is that all you do do you do things like for coordination or vision or how do you help your aim and things like that mm -hmm. yeah for training um we kind of like to do like a well-rounded <laughs> training program. So um, we do like workouts um, for like upper body and lower body kind of like overall fitness. And then we can also do like meditation. Um, I try to meditate like at least every day. <laughs> um, and that's the, the plan anyway. Um, and then also we can do like mental imagery. And so just imagining us shooting um, and that's actually been really effective um, just like visualizing yourself, like holding the bow and shooting. Um, and actually like really <laughs> helps your form um, and just your mindset while you're shooting. My high school golf coach used to tell us to do that on the bus. Like we'd play, we'd go to play nine holes somewhere. And here I am holding a golf ball. Uh, we go to play nine holes somewhere and we'd be on the bus and he'd be like, all right, I want you to like mentally visualize each hole because you've played this golf like you know we've all played those same golf course over and over again and like basically like visualize your entire round and what you're going to do needless to say it didn't go how i ever drew it up but i hope it goes better for you just thinking of happy gilmore right now 
Kevin Nealon's character, send the ball home. <laughs> she wants to go home. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, uh, Sachiko. Um, yeah, no, everything Aaron said is completely true, especially the visualization and the uh, all around um, exercising. Another thing that we also like to do is like a distraction training. I remember um, coach would uh, get these um, balloons that you would like blow up and you would get like at, I think um, baseball stands, you would like bang together and make these really loud noises. And you would just do that at random intervals to like make you like jolt <laughs> <laughs> and just to, like make you like gotta block it out. <laughs> and, like whisper stuff in your ear as well. Maybe throw like ping pong balls at you. <laughs> That's the I could hundred percent see Derek doing that. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Um, I mean. There's also um, these um, balancing pads. I hate them so much. <laughs> you also got to pick your spots too, because again, we're talking about bows and arrows, and you don't want to like misfire or anything. You know, I, I, I not too bad. Nobody's nobody's in the line of, <laughs> you know, line of the targets. Hopefully. Oh no. <laughs> Have you had any close calls in your like in your lives? I guess in terms of like not maybe you. I like but like all of a sudden like somebody's kind of like walking near the range depends on where you are like on um up at baker and the uh field hockey where we normally shoot when it's like warm out sometimes some people i i don't know who it's like whoever decides to like walk behind that area and like the second entrance in the back and we're like you can't be back there <laughs> Get off the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're shooting from, if I'm like, because I've, I've seen you guys shoot uh, at, at Baker. So like if, if that walkway that kind of, that takes you to the parking lot, you know, so you're on the field, you, you, you shoot from the field hockey field. Yeah. Right. And you shoot kind of out toward what would be the field. softball field mm -hmm. area, right? So yeah, you're saying like if people like come out that back gate yeah like, kind of like walking in that area back there yeah because is there any is there any like what the i mean i assume like there's some like netting or i don't know if netting would work but it's just like a wind guard yeah that's back behind the targets that you're shooting at right um i don't think there's any place to like put a wind guard we usually because we don't really shoot like at least like however long the uh, field hockey field is usually there is like a decent amount of space in between it so like the arrows would just like they just can't go that far to like mm -hmm. hit someone, but it's also like you don't want to take any chances with right. anyone. Right. They say you play basketball, you play football, you play tennis, but you can't play boxing. You have to fight. I remember the night where it went completely downhill. It was a massive tumor that had wrapped itself around my spine. Dr. Hartle, who was my surgeon, you know, he aced it. They resurrected me. On August 9th, 2014, I became the WBA middleweight champion of the world. for them we're here for you get back the life you love question when we had uh fencing on uh but you know you mentioned obviously like that the, the archery community is kind of a smaller community even at the national level so how often do you come across and maybe Sachiko and Aaron you two knew each other before Aaron committed to Columbia or you've competed against each other or met each other right but how often do you come across uh you know other people on the team or other people that you know and then all of a sudden you see them in college as well 
Yeah, it's been really great that I know like a lot of the members of the archery team um, going into my first year, because I've definitely um, been able to like lean on them for advice um, and just support throughout this past year. Um, it's been really nice getting to know all of them. And it's just like a, a more intimate community, like from the start. Um, so I'm really thankful for all of them. Not to be stereotypical here of, of archery. So I apologize but in advance, but I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. If I had an apple, like, do I have an apple? I'm not that question. Visual aids, visual aids. <laughs> I know. Visual aids, visual, I know, I know. So <laughs> stereotypical. I got so much. <laughs> so stereotypical. If I, how far away could I stand comfortably? Uh, I mean. Where you, where you wouldn't, where you'd hit the apple and, and uh, not kill me. I mean, I think I'd be fine at 20, but I don't think I would want to shoot. <laughs> <anything>. <laughs> yeah, same with me. I feel like you would have to sign something, like sign a waiver or something <laughs> before we start. <laughs> you would be fine, but like, I'm not comfortable doing that. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about pressure shooting, I mean, that's the ultimate pressure right there. For anybody watching on Twitch, if you want to see Kyle put an apple on his head, Leave a comment. Please, no, and if we get if no. we get thirty comments, no, you gotta make thirty a comments. 30 right? 30. That's not gonna happen. So unless comments. you're getting your whole family to get on there, <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna be no. the most fun episode. I would, I would, I would have to, I would have to get a few dummies, like <laughs> dolls, and like put an apple out there and like watch them do it a few times before I went out there. <laughs> and then I, I would dummy. <laughs> but if I watch you shoot the dummy, I'm like, all right, she can do it. And I'm just how gonna many, be like, just how many miss uh, high, just Kyle, miss high. <laughs> how, many, how many how many comments would it take for you to consider it? Comment. Comments. Like, how many or, comments would know, it take for you to consider it? Oh, you brought it up. I didn't bring it up. I how, didn't say I would go out there and do it. You're volunteering me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't bring that, we really would not be having this conversation. <laughs> anyway, this is what I get. This is what I get for being stereotypical of our tree. See? <laughs> no, I get asked that question like all the time. <laughs> it's never actually happened, though. <laughs> Has no. yet to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how many comments we get on Twitch, Mike, and then, or maybe on social media, and then uh, I'll, I'll have to weigh, I'll have to weigh my options. I have to see how much I trust uh, Sachiko and Aaron when we get it's, back to the field. I, thought, the I probably have to watch him shoot for like an hour and then feel yeah. feel okay about it. Yeah. I, I want to wear like a heavy protected suit. I don't know if that even exists. <laughs> for your head? For archery. <laughs> for everything. <laughs> for my entire body. <laughs> I'd be okay if you were, were, you know, protective gear. Maybe like like the fencing helmet would be enough. I, I think the arrow would just go straight through that mask area, would it not? Well, how far would you be standing away, and what is the fencing helmet right. made out of? Well, I guess you said 20 yards, right? Yeah. We can probably do that. I don't <laughs> think the fencing helmet will do much. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think the fencing helmet. The fencing helmet stops the sword from going through. So I mean, Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't but come that fast. It doesn't, it, yeah. With all that compressed energy within, like, with whatever how much poundage we're pulling back. It's not going to too much. I love the analytics of it. Yeah, let's let's go like seriously. <laughs> this is like next gen stats right here from uh, the archery team. How fast? All right, so let's talk. Let's talk about the the statistics have a and everything. For that. What's that? They have a machine to measure how fast your arrows are going. So how fast uh, generally uh, does the arrow travel when on your on your shots? Like yeah, I mean you don't. I mean, is there like a target? Uh, speed that you're kind of looking for in your shot or does it depend on how far away the target is that you're shooting at depends on the archer and how much they can pull back at like comfortably okay is faster so like always better to like have it fly straighter or that is generally like what happens but if like you shouldn't like force yourself to like pull a higher poundage if like you can't handle it it's okay to go gradually okay but about how fast does it like on your shots since you've had them measured how fast does the arrow travel? I don't even remember the last time I measured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the last time I measured, it was like one, 180 feet per second, maybe. Feet per second. <laughs> is that like that's accurate? That's right? <laughs> <laughs> OK. What is I don't that? know with Sachi real quick. What is that? I mean, if you need to recurve, I shoot compound. I don't know how much of the difference is. <laughs> yeah, it's probably more for compound, but probably. I think, <laughs> I don't know. yeah. Uh, it's 122 miles per hour in case you're listening and wanting to know. 
Oh, yeah. uh, I don't think the fencing helmet's gonna do. <laughs> fencing helmet's not gonna do much to save you. Get a real helmet. We'll figure something out. A real helmet? There's no helmet. <laughs> Put me in a steel suit. <laughs> Goodness. Oh man. All right. Let's get back on track here. Uh, talk no, to this us is what the about... people. This is what the people really want to hear about. No, this is a great segment. I'm not saying. But we just can't keep going on. But, I know. Okay. But until, it, until it happens. I mean, when we have, we, it's, it's going to be great content. It's going to be amazing video, viral. Um, talk to us a little bit about Coach Davis and what he's like to, to work with. I know, Aaron, you haven't been on campus, but what was it like when he was recruiting you and how has he been? Uh, we'll start with you uh, this, this past year. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, I've known Derek for quite a few years now, just from doing the junior dream team. Um, so it was really nice to have him to like talk to about Columbia. Um, and he's definitely like one of the reasons why I chose Columbia. Um, and he this past year, he's been really supportive, um, really like just keeping up with all of us and <laughs> seeing how we're doing, checking in. Um, and so I'm really excited to be hopefully back next season um, and working with him like one-on-one -on -one, um, at Columbia, but yeah. And how has he been with your development, Sachko? Uh, just just talk about, I mean, you were, you had a, obviously a great first year a couple of years back and talk about how instrumental and what he was able to help you with uh, during your, your freshman year. Uh, yeah, during my freshman year, he was very supportive always willing to like give advice or like be someone to talk to if you've had questions or concerns. Um, yeah, and especially during like the pandemic, he was very adamant of making sure we're all like keeping in touch, keeping tabs on like mental health, making sure we're all doing okay. So yeah, he's been very helpful and very kind. Give me a, uh... One uh, funny uh, Derek Davis story that only only the team knows. I kind of, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like when he, Derek said he was going to get like a haircut and then like I think Savannah wanted to like cut it and then I think we all just kind of joined in. So you all, you all cut his hair? Uh, I did not. I was, I was not handled. I was not going to be responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> She'll shoot an arrow at my head, but she won't cut Derek's hair. That's good. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to shoot. Him. <laughs> you didn't sign a waiver. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Before I leave Columbia, I'm going to make this a goal. This is a goal now. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll do it off of a dummy we'll, we'll make a video I, i'm like saying yeah. yeah we could like edit a video some way and make it look like i was there every time it gets brought back up now i'm just like getting nervous thinking about it. i'm like why I, I didn't even agree to this i don't have to do this stop getting nervous about it <laughs> mike's peer pressuring me does everybody see what's happening here <laughs> if i were to successfully do it you would be next <laughs> that's the deal that's the deal maybe we'll talk offline if i live you go next. You'll live. You'll be fine. <laughs> we have national nice. champions here. <laughs> we have <laughs> champions here. Yeah, well, well, they're making me sign waivers, so I didn't feel too confident. They're just being not recommended. That you <laughs> <Not recommended>. <laughs> <laughs> just covering the bases, you know. Just go, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you they are Columbia students. Now. They know. They know. They. I feel like they've they've been asked this question so many times that they just like go they, to. The they're prepared. They have they prepared are. answer. I mean, you sign waivers when you go to like for the first time in archery ranges. So I think it's just a basic thing now. I have never gone to an archery range, but I did go axe throwing for the first time a couple of years. Have either of you gone axe throwing? I have. Do you enjoy axe throwing? I've only done it once, but yeah, I was able to hit the uh, middle of whatever target that they had up. So I was really... going to say, did you find it harder or easier than like trying to learn archery? Um, I think the aiming part will probably be harder, but um, I think I want to try and like get to like throwing with like one hand. Right now I can only do it with like if I have two. Yeah, same. When I did it with two hands like two overhead and like yeah. let it go as they were as they as they teach you I, I was like I was pretty good at hitting the target every time yeah. as soon as I tried to do it with one hand it was it was everywhere it was mine just went straight to the floor <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even reach the target <laughs> Aaron if you haven't gone axe throwing I'm sure there's plenty of places in New York that uh 
you can definitely find. I think there's a place, Mike, in Jersey nearby that Kim and I have drove by up 17. Yep. yep. I think I've seen it as well. You both talked a little bit about, you know, meditating and trying to stay on that even keel. And it's a little bit different than other sports. But like, you know, you see a lot of, especially a sport, I got, we keep going back to fencing for some reason, but like you see these like reactions of, of, you know, after they get a point or win a big bout or anything, they, they really celebrate. Do you guys celebrate after you, you, you fire a good shot? Do you know when it like leaves your hand, like when it's, where it's going? And like, is there, is it like that? Like are the celebrations like that in archery or have you seen that anywhere? Um, I think you can kind of know when an arrow is going to go where you want it to go. But um, I guess like the celebrations are like internal. <laughs> you can't really see it on the outside. Um, and archery, yeah, archery doesn't really have like a spirit section that <laughs> where everyone's <laughs> screaming. And, like, you will see it there. Yeah. Only there? like at the end, the last day. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Team rounds is where everyone starts just screaming so loud. Is it toward the end as like, you know, it, like every shot is like so crucial? Is that like when it happens when other people are finished or? I don't know. I think it's just like the spear, or like the joy, because it's like um basically you get team, depending on like where you were ranked with like qualifiers and like on the last day of like these big like um, national tournaments, like uh, outdoor nationals, especially. I think on the last day, like depending on like how you like qualified with like your scores and like the previous days, you get matched up with like um, three or four of the people, however they want to like section it up. And I think it's just you get to hang out with these new people, talk to them and work with them and trying to like get your shots off to try and win and beat the other teams and win the team rounds. And it's just like a fun time. Yeah, I love team rounds because I feel like archery is a is a individual sport. Like we are on a team at Columbia, but we're all competing kind of for ourselves. Um, but for team rounds, we can like be with two or three other people and shooting all together. And so I really like it. Yeah, when we've talked to, and again, fencing. When we've talked to fencing, it's very similar. Whereas that's, you know, at, at the international level, it's a it's an individual sport, right? At most levels, it's an individual sport, but then in co- all of a sudden college fencing makes it a team sport. So I feel like it's the same then with archery where all of a sudden it's a team sport and it's kind of like this different level of excitement that you don't generally get to experience. My last question is we asked this to a few of our student athletes. Um, who are some role models that you have in the archer, archery world? Do, are there some people, you know, Olympians or on the national scene who you've looked up to and try to, you know, model your craft after a little bit? Or are you both kind of just self-made? I personally just admired like people who I don't think it really mattered like who I looked up to I didn't really have like set like people that I did I didn't when I started I didn't know anybody (laughs) at all I was just focusing on trying to hit the target and I think like after just meeting people and like friends after like the years I think I just like admired them for like like when they shoot a bad shot at like elimination round and like you can see them like getting like so stressed but yeah, like they can pull together and win. I think like anyone who can do that is like where they're just being admired. How they can just keep getting back up and just finishing that shot. Yeah, same for me. I don't think there was like one person that I was really like trying to emulate when I started archery. Um, but when I got into it, there's just like the, a giant community of like strong especially women in sport. Um, I think that's really important to like acknowledge um, and how strong they are and just, I guess just trying to emulate them um, in my like archery career. Um, I think that was really important. Who is, who is the, like the Michael Jordan of archery for people who don't know? Like who is like, or is there like a LeBron Jordan debate? Like, is there, there are a few people like, I, I, I think people would, you know, I, I don't know the answer. I think other people might find it interesting too. Maybe they'll Google them and look them up. Um, I would, like, sorry. No, you can go. I think like some like first names that come to mind, I think like uh, Sarah Lopez, probably. Um, Leo Wild. 
few of others, uh, Aaron. Yeah, on the recurve side, um, probably like Brady Ellison. He's kind of like a household name <laughs> and he's still shooting now. Um, he's been to like multiple Olympics, I think. But yeah, I would say he's like the, the Michael James of archery. <laughs> <laughs> You have, uh, I just want to make sure I'm not saying something incorrect. Sorry. I mean, just for, so you, you mentioned Olympics. So for the two of you, like the big Olympics, are there any aspirations? Well, I can't. Why's that? Oh, yeah. I shoot compound. There's no, oh, there's no compound. Uh, yeah. well, can you, so I actually explain, did know that. Okay. Explain for our listeners. The difference between compound and recurve um recurve is what most people think of like you can think of hunger games but that's a bare bow just think of that but like with stabilizers a sight and like it's not made out of wood it's made out of metal um that's generally recurve i hope i didn't like <laughs> i hope i explained that right for you Aaron. yeah just not trying to disrespect aaron at all <laughs> <laughs> And um, for a compound, it's more of like what people would consider like like a, the modern bow, I guess you would say. It's generally more accurate because it has um, cams on it or like a pulley system. So when you pull back, you could be pulling like 50 pounds. But then when you get to like your anchoring point, then you would only be, you wouldn't be holding 50 pounds anymore. You would just be holding like five or 10 pounds. So it'd be a lot easier to hold for a lot longer and like take it your time and like really make sure you can get your shot off. So that's really like the main differences between the two. How difficult would it be for a compound shooter to go recurve? Does that happen generally? Is there people that shoot both? Yeah, I would say that there's people who shoot both. Um, they can kind of be like ambidextrous if they want. Um, I've tried compound a few times um, and I just prefer recurve more. <laughs> no hate on compound. But, but. I've, I've never shot a recurve before. I've only like shot like um, bare bow. That was the closest I forgot to recurve. Okay. And speaking of, I like to ask this question too. And we definitely asked this last spring, but I'm going to ask it again. You mentioned Hunger Games. So I want you to describe to us what movie has like done the best or show has done the best job in terms of not looking completely ridiculous in your opinion to, to a normal person. No, I shouldn't say normal to the average person who doesn't shoot. Uh, you know, we have no idea one way or the other, but I'm sure when you watch movies and people are shooting uh, bow and arrow, you probably look at them and like, this would never happen. This, this, it doesn't work like that. So who, what movie does the best job? I would personally say Brave, just because like, um, you know the uh, scene where she's uh, sh going past all the targets from like all the suitors who shot and she's just shooting the middle each and every time. And then the last shot, it's like a slow motion of the arrow going and hitting like a Robin Hood. So cool looking. <laughs> they, actually, <laughs> they actually like, um, according to like people who made the movie they actually like, took the time and like looked at slow motion arrows to like perfectly emulate and track like how an arrow actually moves so it has all the bends when it goes off it doesn't like fly completely straight the only thing that like doesn't happen is like the um arrow going all the way through the shaft and like hitting the uh going through the target it usually never goes through the entire arrow shaft <laughs> and, like, stops, like around halfway i'm pretty yeah. sure let's see how like I'm, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that's the movie we did talk about in the spring. It just took us a while to get there, Kyle. If you remember. did, we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> oh yeah, that only happens if like the target is really old or something. Like, <laughs> not not normal. But um, I would say Hunger Games kind of does a good job at depicting like bare bow shooting. Um, I think um, Jennifer Lawrence was actually like coached by Katuna Lorig which um, is an Olympian in archery. And so I think she did a really good job of trying to emulate like bare bow shooting. But I definitely like to critique like archery in the media because sometimes it's just not, like, not <laughs> accurate. <laughs> who does, who does, what, what movie does a bad job? Um, movies. 
<laughs> what movie that yeah. comes to mind? Um, anything with like Hawkeye's bow, really. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I see it, I'm like, that looks so cool, but it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not real. <laughs> I want to do that, but it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't like to say we've taken up enough of their time because hopefully they enjoyed being on the podcast, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, Mike, I think uh, this is a good way to, uh, to kick off our fourth season of the Roarcast. Season four. You so yeah, under year uh, number two of the broadcast. Yeah. So thanks so much to Sachiko and Aaron for joining us today. We'll be back next week for episode two. Uh, hope you enjoyed this season premiere of the broadcast presented by Jag One Physical Therapy uh, for Kyle McCrish and I'm Mike Kowalski. Make sure you check us out next Monday uh, right here on Twitch or on all your major podcast platforms, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, wherever you podcast we're there. So we will talk to you next week right here. Thanks, everybody.